savory cinnamon rolls, bacon, cheddar, and garlic. Yes, please. Stick around for this recipe. It will change your life. I think you're gonna be shocked at how easy this is. It's so great. It's basically a cinnamon roll dough, but without the vanilla. So these are savory cinnamon rolls. Let's make it happen. You're gonna need a stand mixer for this. So what I did first is I got some water, a quarter cup, heated it to about 100 degrees, and then I poured in one packet of active dry yeast. That's two and a quarter teaspoons if you don't have packets. If you have instant yeast instead of active dry, you don't need to do the whole water thing. You can just add the yeast directly to the dough. So in the stand mixer here, we have a quarter cup of granulated sugar going in, along with three quarters of a cup of whole milk that I heated just until it was room temperature. You want all your ingredients to be room temperature for this. We're also adding in one large egg, room temperature, six tablespoons, unsalted butter, melted and cooled to room temperature. And another reason to keep everything room temperature is that if you were to put melted butter into cold ingredients, it would just solidify. No bueno. And we have our activated yeast mixture. Again, if you have instant yeast, same amount, but just put the yeast in. You don't need to activate it in water beforehand. And then I'm gonna use a whisk to bring everything in here together. And then I have three and a half cups of all-purpose flour that we're going to add into here. So I'm gonna add our dough hook onto our stand mixer. I'm gonna add in two cups of this first, start to get it combined. And we're gonna add in um, half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just gonna go in with the rest of our flour. Turn the speed up to medium and knead it for about five minutes. It should be slightly elastic, shouldn't be too sticky. I'm always a little too entertained when I use that stand mixer for dough because it shuffles and I like to see how far it moves, how many steps did it get in today? She got a lot of steps. This is a beautiful dough. It's a very basic dough. You could do so many things with this and it's not too sticky. It's got some nice elasticity to it. Perfect. I'm just going to gather it into a ball just by kind of tucking it under itself, rotating and bringing it in towards my body. It's so pretty and perfect, I can't get over it. Why am I this excited about dough? <laughs> so all you need to do is get a large bowl, grease it with cooking spray, and then you wanna put this in and let it rise until doubled in size, which depending on if your ingredients were room temperature, the temperature of your kitchen, where you put it, so many things can take anywhere from one to two hours. So just keep an eye on it, cover it loosely with plastic and a kitchen towel, put it in a warm spot in your kitchen and just give it one to two hours. When it's doubled, we can move on. Oh, this looks so good. The dough definitely doubled in size. Just get the air out. And then now is time for the fun. So you wanna make sure you have a clean surface and then you're gonna need to dust some flour. So just turn your dough out onto your floured surface. So I'm gonna add a little bit of flour on top. I'm gonna roll the rolling pin in the flour and then we're just gonna roll it out. And you wanna roll this out until it is about, it's about a quarter inch thick. And I like to go both ways. It's actually not true. When rolling the dough, I roll it lengthwise and widthwise, whatever. Now, just because I am a perfectionist, I am gonna trim the dough just to make it a more perfect rectangle. So now this is gonna get all the deliciousness. So I have a stick of butter, half a cup, that I'm going to spread evenly all over the dough. I like to use a frosting spatula for this. It just kind of helps it go a little bit quicker. If you don't have one, use a knife or a spoon, whatever you have, your hands even. So now it's time for some cheese and bacon. I'm also gonna add a little bit of black pepper to this. Shh. <laughs> All right, so I also have some freshly chopped garlic here. I have six cloves of chopped garlic. It's minced, not chopped. <laughs> then I'm gonna just sprinkle over all of this. Okay, next we have shredded cheddar. Use whatever kind of cheese you like. I figured cheddar was the most universal. Last but not least, we got some bacon. So what I did is I cooked this um, a little while ago. I baked it in the oven at 375 for about 15 minutes. I did that so that it would cook most of the way, not 100%, but so that a lot of the fat would come out of it. Because if you were to put raw bacon in this, the bacon would take too long to cook and the dough would overbake, and then all the grease that comes out of the bacon would just make it a mess. 
So baking this beforehand helps get a lot of that grease out so these don't become too greasy. And then it makes it so that everything will be done cooking at the same time. So on goes our bacon. And you can, I just chopped this into pretty big size pieces. You can crumble this to however large pieces you want. If you want just tiny bits, that's fine. I just like biting into a big piece of bacon. <laughs> so now we just get to rolling this up. I'm gonna use the long side and roll that way. And the key is to just make sure you're keeping it really tight. And then we're gonna get to cutting. So a lot of people use dental floss to evenly cut rolls without squishing them. Because we have bacon in here, we need to actually cut them just because string isn't really gonna do the trick. So I'm going to gently just cut off the end. So what I like to do to get 12 even rolls is I'm going to cut it in half. Then I'm gonna cut each half in half. And then each quarter, I'm gonna cut into thirds. And that gives you 12 even size rolls. Last but not least, we have a nine by 13 inch dish. I greased it with cooking spray and all that's left to do is to put these lovely little rolls in our dish. So these are going to go for their second rise, which is called proofing. Again, you wanna put them in a relatively warm spot in your kitchen, cover loosely with plastic and a kitchen towel. And then again, this will range anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to an hour and 15 minutes just based off the atmosphere in your kitchen but you're looking for these to puff up and pretty much double in size and then just look at how perfect these fit in the dish i'm so excited about this i have a problem i'll see you in a little bit i mean come on you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually start preheating it once I cover these for the proofing. And then these bake for around 30 minutes. A good way to tell that these are done is if the dough has an internal temperature of 190 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how you know dough is perfectly baked. You guys, these are unbelievably good. Mm. Full recipe is in the description. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you guys next time.